Hi, hello. How are you? You doing okay? Aw, oh, thank you so much for joining me for yet another video. My name is Adrian Lee. You know me as the Wandering Art Historian. Um, we've been talking about a lot of cool stuff lately. Remind me, what are we talking about again? <laughs> a closer look at famous sculptures, shaking things up. I'm presenting you with a whole variety of crazy different things to get you really thinking about what is art and ugh, we've been having a blast haven't we I've been having fun I hope you're having fun of course do not forget don't forget to follow the blog new content every week if you like this kind of stuff there's even more of that over on the blog okay cool okay so at this point you may be looking at your screen thinking Adrian this is not a sculpture this is a prank or this is someone's garbage okay um, and in a way you might be kind of right okay um, let's talk about the artist who created this sculpture and then we'll come back to this sculpture okay what do you think yeah all right Robert Rauschenberg yes okay American artist he lived 1925 to 2008, Black Mountain College, studying under the artist Joseph Albers. Now, the great thing about um, his time at Black Mountain College, they were doing a lot of experimental, existential, philosophical pieces of art there, and not all like tactile, like there was dance and all kinds of crazy stuff going on there and it's that you might be able to trace some of these conceptual ideas back to his time at Black Mountain College um, but one of the cool things is studying under Joseph Albers um, Robert Rauschenberg said that he credits him with not teaching him the style of art but how to develop an attitude towards art Hmm. hmm interesting right okay um obviously you see here that he's influenced by the work of Marcel Duchamp and of course you know how much I love Marcel Duchamp and just as a little reminder there is a Marcel Duchamp video as part of the series do you remember when we talked about his ready-mades and we discussed bicycle wheel okay so remember what we talked about the idea of you take one object with a purpose with one purpose and another object with another purpose and you take that purpose away and you put them together and they have a new purpose and they're not practical anymore but if you put them together and aesthetically speaking there's a certain level of uh, beauty or admiration for it in the respect of you've created an art object and that you are the artist and you say it is art and we talked about the idea that Duchamp was trying to lift these everyday mass-produced practical items up to the level of fine art or high art and it's interesting because if that's where we're gonna start what's Robert Rauschenberg gonna take from that what is what is he gonna build onto that well let's go back to this thing I showed you yeah 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 okay so what we're looking at is titled monogram from 1955 to 1959 you're probably looking at it thinking I don't know where to begin well let's start with what it's made of okay oil paper fabric printed paper printed reproductions metal wood rubber shoe heel it's on there look for it a tennis ball um, oil a rubber tire with an Angora goat on a wood platform mounted on four casters so not only do you have all of this stuff together it rolls so it's mobile oh isn't that fun okay what's going on here so this is the concept I'd like you to consider the idea of combines that's how Robert Rauschenberg referred to some of these sculptures as combines and it's basically exactly what you think it is it's a combination of things okay one way you could remember it is like like an assemblage of things or like a collage in three dimensions 
Ah, yeah, a collage in three dimensions. I like that, okay? Um, so what you're thinking is, or what you want to keep in mind is that he's kind of trying to break the fourth wall. We talk about that a lot in pop culture with like television and film. Oh, the characters break the fourth wall. As an artist, Robert Rauschenberg was kind of trying to do that. He didn't want to just stick with paintings that hung on a wall. He wanted to create something with multiple dimensions, something that would invade our space as the viewer, right? Something that you could walk up to and it was in three dimensions and it kind of blurred the lines between the art work and the art viewer. Does that make sense? Uh, and that's kind of driven home by the point with the point that this particular artwork was on casters so it could roll. Okay, interesting. So here's the thing. I went through that list of stuff, right? Um, not really fine art materials, definitely not white marble, bronze or anything like that. So how would you describe it? Is it like the, the constructivist artists from uh, the Russian avant-garde who went to the industrial site? You might take it a step further and say, it's almost like Robert Rauschenberg went to his garbage can or a dumpster behind his apartment, right? And in a sense, that's kind of accurate, okay? This is the thing. Robert Rauschenberg said this. Here's a quote. A picture is more like the real world when it is made out of the real world, okay? He said, quote, I want my paintings to be reflections of life. Your self-visualization is a reflection of your surroundings. Okay, so we're in the 1950s and Robert Rauschenberg is looking at the art world and he's like, we've spent decades in America looking at the art world and lifting up these artists and we're so focused on artists and their psychology and their emotions and blah, blah, blah and all that kind of stuff. And he's really reacting to that. He's like, I don't want the art to be about me. I want it to be about you. I'm going to present you with things, a combination of things from your everyday life. And I want you to start thinking about you and how do those things relate to you and your life. He was kind of giving us our life back to us, holding up a mirror, if you will, to our everyday lives as Americans in the 1950s in a disposable kind of society. Consumerism, mass production, we throw stuff out now, right? So he's taking that trash and making art out of it. And believe it or not, Robert Rauschenberg really just paves the way for um, the art of the 70s and 80s, and in particular, pop art. Hmm, interesting, right? Um, so let me leave you with this. You could say that while Marcel Duchamp was taking everyday items and lifting them up to the level of fine art, Robert Rauschenberg was actually taking trash, your discarded items, and lifting them up to the level of fine art and saying, the things that you throw away can still be beautiful. Oof. I don't know, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, yeah, think about that and tell me your thoughts. Those comments are there for a reason. Tell me what you think, okay? Thank you so much. I love our time together. I love talking to you about art. You're amazing. Don't forget to like, don't forget to comment, don't forget to share, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That way you get notifications whenever there's a new video, okay? My name is Adrian Lee. You know me as the Wandering Art Historian. Thank you so much for chatting with me about art today. I hope you had fun. I know I did. I'll see you next time. Bye.